Hello. Welcome guys back to my channel. Today I am super stoked to be creating one of my favorite looks on one of my favorite people. I have my good friend Milena coming on in to be our model today. I'm transforming her from her naturally gorgeous self into a full blown superstar. So for the boys and girls out there who wanna learn how to achieve that sapphire blue eye paired with the nude lip and some flawless skin, you've come to the right place, baby. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. To start off, I'm using the Dewy Skin Cream from Tatcha, and I put this on the back of my hand, I warm it up with the Beauty Blender, and then I apply it to the skin. And of course, I bring it down the neck and the chest and everywhere and anywhere that we're gonna be applying foundation or any other products. I leave this on for about five to 10 minutes before I put any other products on top of it. Next up, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Cream Contour Kit. This is in the deep shade. I'm mixing together a couple of those contour colors to create the perfect contour shade for our model. And I'm gonna be placing this product uh, along the perimeter of the face, including the hollows of the cheeks, underneath the jawline, even underneath the lip, and of course the sides of the nose to contour the nose. By using a brush that isn't too dense, like the one I'm using, it prevents me from getting too harsh of lines with the product, which is really gonna help when it comes down to blending. And although I usually apply my foundation first and then I go on top with the cream contour and highlights, I've decided to do the cream contour first today because I knew I really wanted a full glam effect and I knew I was gonna be photographing this look. So by applying this heavy contour underneath the foundation, I know it's not gonna get washed out in flash photography. To color correct, I'm going to use that peachy coral cream in the same Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. And with my ring finger, I'm just applying this to the areas I want. My rule of thumb is the deeper the skin tone and the brighter you wanna go with your highlight, the warmer you're gonna want your color corrector to be. And this will prevent there from being any great undertones in your makeup. Once I've applied this cream to all the areas that I wanna color correct, I'm gonna move on into foundation. Today I'm using the CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation. This is in the shade T15, and it's one of my favorite drugstore foundations. Now, contrary to what it says, it's not the most matte foundation. It's more of a satin finish, but it is a medium to full coverage foundation. It blends really beautifully, and it's gotta be in my top three favorite drugstore foundations. I keep these in my kit all the time, and I've been using this for a couple of years now. Now you see I'm applying this with the large fluffy face brush, and this will just allow for a really diffused application so everything remains soft, and I can build this up in areas that I want it to be built up in. And you can probably also see that I'm not being the most precise with the application so far. Right now my goal is just to get the product on the face, and then we'll work out the details as we progress. To conceal, I'm using the Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealers. I'm using two different shades. They're the shades Vanilla and Butterscotch. While I love the brightness of Vanilla, I needed a little bit of the warmth from Butterscotch. So I mixed the two on the back of my hand and created a little custom shade for her. I apply it directly underneath the eyes and I fan it outwards towards the perimeter of her face. If you're not really too sure how far up to bring your concealer, I recommend just following your bottom lash line directly outwards, and that's an almost guarantee of a perfect placement. I'll also be applying this concealer to the chin, down the nose, and the center of the forehead. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. You're thinking, Spence, do you realize that her foundation, her face, is about one to two shades darker than her chest? I promise you, I'm fully aware this is done strategically especially when my model is working in front of really bright lights and I'm gonna be using a really bright concealer on top of the foundation. I usually go a couple shades darker with foundation and by the time I blend everything together with the concealer, it'll all neutralize and be perfect, I promise. Although I wasn't prepared for the undertone of this foundation. It looked great in person, but on camera, it had a slight red undertone, which I wasn't too crazy about. I almost decided to start from scratch and wipe everything off, but I figured that I can't be the only one who deals with this. So I thought I'd just show you how I fix this kind of problem. And it's gonna be later on when I work with powder. So stay tuned. It's important for me to mention that Makeup is art, and I don't believe in teaching someone how to create art, it's very subjective. I just simply just wanna share with you my techniques and what's worked for me and what I do to achieve my looks. 
And if you can take one or two things away from this that work for you, then great. But you'll find that some things work for you and some things don't, and that's okay. I simply just wanna share with you and it's all coming from a really good, loving place. To set the under eyes, I'm using the Ben Nye Banana Powder. It's a setting powder that I really love. I've been using it for years now. For those of you who have used it, you know it's really yellow in tone, which kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about how I was gonna fix that red undertone in our skin. I'm using something that has that really rich yellow base to it, so that way it brings that yellow undertone back to life in her face. The same is gonna go for the face powder. I'm using the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder in the shade Blondie. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply this powder with a large fluffy face brush. And then once it's on the skin, I'm gonna go in with a powder puff and really press that powder into the skin. That's a little trick of mine. It's what gives me that really flawless airbrushed look to the skin, especially for video. You'll see that any of the texture that we had on the forehead or on the cheeks will completely disappear. With this powder contour kit by Anastasia Beverly Hills, I'm gonna further emphasize all the areas that we had previously placed the cream contour in. This is the medium to deep powder contour kit. I know, I know it's been around forever, but it's still one of my go-tos for face palettes. I love it, it's incredible. I love the formula, I love the shades. It's definitely an A plus in my books. And I'll be listing all of these products this time down in the description box. So if you wanna refer back to the products I used, just check it out down below. And also side note, now that I've started YouTube and I'm doing these makeovers, I'm needing models. I feel kind of silly asking, but if, if, if anyone wants to get their hair and makeup done and be a model for me, then go ahead and comment down below and maybe we can make some magic happen. I just thought I'd throw it out there. Because this is a heavier glam look, I'm being pretty generous with this product. I'm using the two darker shades in the palette and mixing them together to create this shade. And as I said, I'm just taking this along the perimeter of the face and anywhere where we had applied the cream contour previously. This is just to bring that definition back. Sometimes we can lose that structure and that definition when we set the face with the setting powder. So this is just bringing everything back to life. And then what I'm doing here is I'm taking a clean face brush and I'm just blending everything together to make sure it's seamless. At this point, I'm taking those same shades from the powder contour palette and I'm putting it right up underneath the eyebrows. And this will give me that really structured model-esque look that I love. And then of course I take it down the sides of the nose and underneath the lip just to make that lower lip a little bit more plump. Going back in with our Benai Banana Powder, I'm taking a powder puff and just pinching it at the end to create a more precise application and I'm beginning to bake underneath the eyes. Same rule of thumb from earlier, I'm just following that lash line up and outwards. I know I've said it before, but when it comes down to baking and highlighting and contouring, everyone's face is different. So what might work for our model, Milena here, may not work for you and vice versa. So I think I should maybe one of these days create a video on how to bake and contour for different face shapes. If you guys wanna see something like that, let me know. And I think that would be kind of fun. Now that we have about 90% of the face products done with, I'm going to apply this Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask to her lips. So that way later on when we apply lipstick, they're moisturized. And then I'm gonna start the brow process. I'm using this Brow Wiz in the shade Soft Brown by Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I'm slowly gonna start building up this brow to get it to the thickness and density that I want it to be at. I was kind of going for a slight 90s vibe for this whole makeup look. So I wanted to keep the brows somewhat on the thinner side. I didn't wanna go overboard with this really fluffy, full brow that's really in style right now. I really wanted to keep it clean and simple, but yet dark enough so that it matches her hair. I've been using these brow whizzes forever now. They've been there for me through thick and thin, no pun intended. With a smaller detail brush, I am connecting the nose contour with the eyebrow with a little bit of that contour powder. To start the eye look, we're using the Life Liner Eyeliner by Huda Beauty, and we're taking the pencil side of this liner and placing it right in the upper lid lash line and winging it out slightly. You'll see I'm not being too precise with it because we're gonna end up blending this out anyways, but this is just the backdrop per se for the eyeshadows that are to follow. Think of it like contouring, but instead of the face, we're doing it with the eye, and instead of a skin tone or a brown, we're using black. The black is what's gonna give the eyeshadow that we put on top of it the depth and richness that we want. 
I'm bringing this halfway up into the crease so that way we can add some contrast to the lid and the crease itself so we can have that illusion that there's a large open eye. It's gonna look really beautiful when I'm done. With an eyeshadow brush, I'm gonna start buffing out that liner and smoking it outwards. I was only gonna include a few seconds of this footage originally, but then I thought about all the times I've seen tutorials where someone's applying eyeshadow and then in a blink of an eye, it's perfectly blended out. And I would be so confused because I knew it'd take me forever. So instead of cutting it short, I just thought I'd include all the footage and just speed it up. And again, we're going on top of this with eyeshadows, so this doesn't really have to be absolutely perfect. Speaking of eyeshadow, when I first thought of a blue, bold eye look, I figured what better palette to use than the Blue Blood Eyeshadow Palette by Jeffree Star Cosmetics. And I'm only gonna end up using three shadows for this complete look. I'm starting out with the shade Undertaker, which is a really deep navy blue, and I'm placing that on top of wherever I place the black liner. So I pack on that eyeshadow with a flat blending brush and softly start diffusing the edges. The second shade that we're gonna use from the palette that we're gonna use for the center of the lid is called Deceased. And it's this really rich blue that has a slight metallic finish, which I think is really nice because that right in the center of the lid is gonna catch light, which is gonna make the contrast even more dramatic. Another bonus to having a cream liner or eyeshadow stick on top of the lid before applying a shadow is that you're gonna have less fallout because the shadows and the pigments have something to grip onto. Once you have those edges diffused, I'm gonna take our Huda Beauty pencil again and run that through the waterline. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna take it back and reline the upper lid as well. With another flat blending brush, I'm going to dip back into the shade Deceased and I'm gonna slowly start smoking out the bottom lash line. The last eyeshadow we'll be using is the shade Priceless. And with a detailed blending brush, I'm going to place that right at the brow bone and this will really help make it pop. And you'll see here how these few short steps can make a dramatic difference. And with the other side of the Hooded Beauty eyeliner, there is a liquid pen and I'm using that just to trace the upper waterline. For mascara today, I am using the Better Than Sex Mascara by Too Faced and I'm coating both the top and bottom lashes with this. Once the mascara has dried down, I'm going to apply our false lashes. For lashes, I am using the Exotic Style Lash from Salon Perfect. And as you can see here, as I'm waiting for the lash glue to dry, I'm twisting the lash in a circular motion, so that way when I place it on the lid, the edges of the lash really form to the eyelid, and that's something that can help if you're experiencing the corners of your lashes lifting throughout the day. So here I'm dipping into the lighter shades in my powder contour palette, and I'm wiping off the excess baking powder that we have. I should start writing down these names of brushes that I'm using. I, I have a bad habit of just grabbing for whatever's around, but honestly, some of my brushes are so old that the names of them have worn off. I mean, you've probably noticed that the products that I'm using and showing you, they look busted. They look like they've been through it. But I hope that just goes to show you that these are products that I'm actually using to achieve my looks on a day-to-day -day basis and not just products that I'm using fresh out of PR. You know what I'm saying? So as you saw there, I used the Ben Nye Banana Powder to bake the jawline, and now I'm starting the lips. So get this, for lip liner, I'm actually going back in with that cream contour color that we used from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Cream Contour Kit. So it's the same shade that we had used for the face when we were contouring it with the creams. I'm really focusing this product on the outer edges of the lip while keeping the center bare for the lipstick, which is Kylie Cosmetics Liquid Lipstick in the shade Exposed. I'm placing this directly in the center while diffusing it outwards. Now you guys know I love a glossy lip, but honestly, I, I really kind of like these two together as is. I think for the first time in a long time, I like this matte lip, but of course I'm gonna be extra and add a gloss. The gloss I'm using is from KKW Beauty in the shade Proud of You. It's this really beautiful nude peachy shade, and I'm gonna place that all over the lip and that will brighten it up while giving it a really beautiful shine. If you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of glosses, but you want to start experimenting with them without having to spend an arm and a leg, I recommend you buy one really good clear gloss. And with the lipsticks that you already own, you can mix those in with the clear gloss and create pretty much any custom shade that you could imagine. 
And then for blush, I'm going in with my Urban Decay Cosmetics Stay Naked 3 Sum Palette. I really only use this palette for the blush because the blush is that good. It's this beautiful pinky peach shade. It is my current favorite blush. I can't get enough of it. I can just drench the cheeks with this, as you can see. I go kind of crazy with it. After that, I go back to my mascara and I really press her natural lash in with a synthetic lash so that way there's no gap in between. To set the face, I'm using Fix Plus from MAC Cosmetics and I'm being pretty generous with this because we used so many powders on the face that by using this, it'll help make the skin look alive again because it just melts the powders down. And finally, we're at the last step. I'm gonna be using the Cover FX Glitter Drops in the shade Nova to add some glow back to the skin. I definitely recommend applying this with a brush rather than straight from the dropper because this highlighter is extremely pigmented. And in case you forgot, we took this natural beauty from this and turned her into a glam goddess. <laughs> There we have it kids. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Now that I'm on YouTube, I've made a commitment to myself to upload a video at least once a week. So if you guys like these kind of transformation makeover videos, let me know by giving me a thumbs up down below. You can check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And of course, last but not least, go ahead and subscribe. I know you want to. Don't make me beg. Because I will beg.